Jared here with CarBuzz.com, and I'm actually taking a vacation this week, a much needed vacation after the New York Auto Show. And I thought I'd borrow a car to drive around while I'm here, so I've picked this, the 2019 Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Now that Quadrifoglio, that is the important part. So as you can see here, we've got the little four leaf clover. That's what Quadrifoglio means. It's the name that is affixed to all of the fastest Alfa Romeo models, just like you'd see BMW put an M badge on their cars or Mercedes put AMG on theirs cars. So that's gonna make a huge difference with the Stelvio. That's gonna take it from a 280 horsepower four cylinder turbo to a 2.9 liter twin turbocharged V6 pumping out 505 horsepower. This was, and it just got beat out by the Mercedes GLC 63 AMG S, but this was, when they lapped it around the Nürburgring, the fastest SUV in the world, and it still is pretty darn close. So I'm pretty happy to test it, and I can talk to you all about the outside. Let's start a little bit with the styling. You're gonna notice these big wheels with these big old six piston calipers. You can get these wheels on a normal Stelvio, but you're not gonna get these aggressive hood scoops. You're not gonna get the four leaf clover on the vent, but you are gonna get this gorgeous front end. This is one of the most handsome SUVs that money can buy. That's just an Alfa Romeo staple. They're always going to look good. Alfa Romeo is a bit of a weird brand. They haven't been back into the U.S. for a while, but now they're back. I think this is the most important car they could have brought out because this is the thing everybody's buying. It's a compact crossover, which is what everybody wants nowadays. Stelvio is a road in Switzerland, one of the best driving roads in the world. So Alfa picked a good name for what is essentially one of the best driving SUVs. Now, before we get it out on the road, I've already shown you the front end styling, which is really cool. You've got that triangle front grille that's sort of an Alfa Romeo signature. Let's check out the back real quick before we get it out on the road. All right, so from the back, there's not too much to differentiate a Quadrifoglio Stelvio from a normal one. You've got these really wide, flared wheel arches. They're more flared here in the back. You've got 285 rubber in the back, which is pretty crazy. You've got your Q4 badge, which is basically just going to mean it's all-wheel drive. The Julia Quadrifoglio only comes as rear-wheel drive, so if you live in a cold-weather climate but want a performance car, you can drive all year round. That might be one reason to consider this, aside from the increased ride height and the added practicality that the SUV gives you. Uh, you have th this tiny little rear window. It's not that easy to see out of. You've got this big gigantic tailgate that just kind of takes up a lot of space. I wasn't crazy about it, but I do think this is one of the more handsomely designed SUVs. It kind of reminds me of the BMW X4, if I'm honest, with how this is just so flat here, and then the rear window is just a little bit smaller, but it doesn't really take up as much trunk space as one of those SUV coupes. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about the name Stelvio and Alfa Romeo. I've already told you what Stelvio means. It was named after a famous driving road in Switzerland, but let's talk a little bit about this Alfa Romeo badge because it's probably something that a lot of you haven't seen for many years if you live in America. You've got this little serpent, snake, whatever you want to call it, and it, there's a little person in his mouth. And I've heard different stories on what this logo actually means. Some people say he's being reborn, so he's actually coming out of the snake's mouths. Other incarnations say that this snake is actually eating this baby. So this is a vehicle, an SUV, that you might actually put a child in. And Alfa Romeo has a baby getting eaten by a snake. I find that absolutely hilarious. But when we get this car out on the road, which we're about to do now, you might see why a baby eating, a snake eating a baby is actually appropriate for this savage performance vehicle. You've got these big quad exhausts, which sound absolutely incredible. Let's get it out on the road and see how that incredible Ferrari derived V8 really gets on. All right, so now I've found a nice little back road here, and we're going to find out the real reason why you buy an Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. The G is silent, and it's not Quadrifoglio, it's Quadrifoglio, as you say it. So the reason why you're going to buy this car over a regular Stelvio is because of this amazing engine that lives under the hood. It's a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6. Sounds a little small for a performance car, but trust me, it doesn't produce small numbers. 
505 horsepower, which is right up there with uh, the V8 mills in this category, and 443 foot-pounds of torque, which is a little low on that number, but trust me, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. And that's going out to this eight-speed automatic transmission with these amazing uh, metal paddle shifters. I absolutely adore them. Zero to 60 in about three and a half seconds, but I have it now in its like advanced mode. You have this DNA controller. We'll go a little bit more into that when we pull over and talk about the interior. A is going to be your least aggressive setting for fuel economy. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into normal, then dynamic, so that's the sportiest, and then let's go ahead and twist that one over into race mode. It may not work because we don't have, there we go. Now we're in race mode. That's gonna open up the exhausts. And when you put it in race mode, it's gonna tell you that race mode is best enjoyed in manual mode. Alpha knows what you want to do with this car. So let's let's not uh, keep Alpha waiting. Let's put it in manual and oh my goodness gracious. Let's see how fast this car can go. This may be an SUV, but it handles like a sports car. It has unbelievably direct steering. We're on this very narrow back road, good brakes. I wanted to talk a little bit about the brakes here because they're great. They're, they're four pistons or in the front, or six pistons in the front, four pistons in the back. They stop great. The only thing that's a little annoying about them is uh, when you're going from like five to zero miles an hour, they can be a little bit grabby and annoying. I drove this through Manhattan the other day and that was not a fun experience for me. But the transmission itself is rocket quick. Oh yeah, woo! You can feel if you time the shifts right, it is blisteringly quick. Just a nice flick of the paddle. Steering is, oh my gosh, good. Usually I complain about these SUVs, like, oh, why do we need a performance SUV? It would be better if we just had a station wagon. And I do that because I feel as though raising the car up a little bit has sullied and spoiled the dynamics. I don't feel that in this. <laughs> and I promise you, I would tell you if I did, but no, this car handles like a sedan should. There's not a lot of body roll. You have some suspension modes you can play with here. It's in its firmest setting. This road is actually pretty smooth, but when you're in the race or dynamic modes, you can push this little suspension button so I can go to mid damper. That makes it a little softer. In dynamic mode, I'm gonna have a softer mode as well, but I have it in the full race mode because this road that I'm on certainly calls for it. And I'm gonna want the best throttle response. So as far as the throttle is concerned, I think that Alfa Romeo might have toned it down a little bit on the Stelvio Quadrifoglio compared to the Giulia. Uh, just because on an SUV, if the throttle was any tippier than this, it would be a little uncomfortable and hard to modulate. This one's good. Like this one, you put your foot down and it responds willingly, but not so much so that it's crazy jerky. In race mode, it definitely is. You're going to want to drive it in the normal modes most of the time. And the other thing that's a little weird here is this is definitely not a soft, comfortable, as we come to a stop here, I can take a moment to talk about this. This isn't like a luxury car. If you're somebody who's just shopping for a comfortable SUV to tote around the family, there are more comfortable options than this. This car is actually pretty darn stiff, although not as stiff as the Julia sedan. I think the extra ride height is gonna help make this a little more comfortable. And you don't have to go slow over bumps because you're in an SUV as well. So people have asked me, why would you buy the Stelvio over the Julia? Well, you can't get an all wheel drive Julia Quadrifoglio. So this gives you, this car gives you the ability to drive it all the time. You know, if you live somewhere like here in Pennsylvania and you want your sports car to last you all year round, this will definitely do it. Whereas the Julia might be a little bit more of a hassle. Whoop, missed time to shift there. But there we go. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, the paddles want you to just kind of pull them real quick. That's what it likes. That's what it really likes. Yeah, it shouts. The uh, So Alfa Romeo has made a change here. When you put it in dynamic mode, you'll be able to open up the exhausts. This one that I'm driving now doesn't have that update. So <laughs> you'll have to put it all the way in race mode to get the full effect of the exhaust. But we're about to go through a tunnel. Here comes the tunnel. Listen to this. Oh my God. Woo. Ho, 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 ho. 
Yeah, it sounded quite good through the tunnel there. So yeah, as far as it being a little bit stiff, other than that, I think this is a perfectly livable car that you could drive every day. It does have adaptive cruise control. The steering is really good. Your gas mileage isn't going to be great. 17 in the city, 23 on the highway, 19 combined. And if we go and check what I've averaged, since I've filled up this last tank, I've done a good amount of highway driving and I've only got 17. The way that this car likes to be driven fast uh, you're not going to be getting gas mi good gas mileage. You're going to be going through gas at quite an alarming rate, even though it is only a V6 engine. Although, to be fair, I haven't been driving it around in its A setting. So let's go ahead and put it back into neutral, shut it up a little bit. It becomes a lot softer and a lot more docile. The throttle in normal and the A modes feels a little weird. It's not... It doesn't feel as quick as you think it does at, or you think it would be at low speeds. So like, I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot on the throttle. There, it picks up real quick. This car doesn't really do medium speed that well when you just need to merge and just get a little bit of power. It's either just a little bit or everything and it really throws you in the back of your seat. So that's a little bit weird. So if you really had your heart set on like an M3 or a sport sedan, something like that, and just the family constraints make it a little bit difficult that you just need a bigger car, I think there's no alternative. There's, you know, some reliability questions that we'll get into a little bit later when we talk about this interior and this nav system, but in terms of the drive, that's the number one reason you buy the Alfa Romeo. It just drives better than any SUV I've ever piloted. This is... I'm not sure if it still does by the time you watch this, but when Alfa Romeo sent this around the Nürburgring, it became the fastest SUV ever to do so. And that's a pretty amazing feat. So if you are simply looking for the best driving SUV and luxury and comfort is not the highest thing on your priority list, Alfa Stelvio Quadrifoglio should be something you're looking at. So... With that in mind, even though driving is the number one thing you are going to do with this car, you're still going to have to live with it. So let's pull over. We're in a town center now, so I don't have any ability to drive fast anymore, unfortunately. So let's pull over and let's talk about the interior, which is okay, but not quite as great as the amazing driving dynamics. So let's take a moment to talk about the interior now that we're pulled over in the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. So the interior is not where Alfa is going to win you over. That is in the last section when we drove this car, but it's not an epic fail either. It is a pretty nice cabin in here. We'll start with the obvious uh, craziness here because this is an Italian car and Alfa Romeo hasn't been in the U.S. for a while. You do have just a little bit of a learning curve getting used to stuff. For example, you've got this red starter button here on the steering wheel instead of over here on the dash. That's uh, something that's kind of carried over. Ferrari likes to have a red starter button on the wheel. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory with your volume controls. You have adaptive cruise control as part of the package on this Stelvia. The thing that some people might not like that I absolutely love, I'm going to go ahead and turn the steering wheel so maybe you can see them better, are these enormous, beautiful metal paddle shifters, one for up, one for down. I adore them while I'm driving, but as somebody like my mother pointed out to me, they do get in the way of your turn signal and wiper controls. Doesn't really bother me too much because I love playing with the paddles. Very clean, simple analog gauges here. You have very basic controls to control the little center screen in the middle. Just one button to switch between trip, uh, speedometer, and some eco controls depending on what drive mode you're in. So not a whole lot going on technology wise. Ditto for this screen. I believe this is actually the bigger of the two screens that Alfa Romeo makes. It's still very small despite its eight inch uh, about diameter is what they say. It just feels small because it's not very tall. Very easy to use, actually, once you figure out what you're doing. I had no idea how to use it before coming into driving this car, and 
you know, using it's pretty simple. You have this rotating knob. It's sort of like BMW's iDrive, except very simplified. You only have two buttons. You have menu and options. So menu is going to take you to what you see here. It's a home menu. You've got this ribbon of things. You've got your radio. You've got different car settings here. I can actually go into the user manual, which is kind of a fun thing to do here. Um, you know, a lot of automakers are doing this now where you can even search by image. So if I go ahead and go to number five, which is the passenger compartment, I can actually show you how to use some of these things like the center console. And then I can go, oh, here are controls in the tunnel. How do I use these? I can talk a little bit about um, the rotary pad here. It just twists, so it twists in different directions and it goes up, down, left, and right. There is no back button, but basically if you bump it over to the left, that basically acts as your back button. So very simple and easy to use. I wanted to point out this. This is the DNA controller. Alpha has been doing this for a while now, even before they've come back to America. So it's a little confusing to somebody that's never seen it before. It's basically your sport, eco, whatever, but they have different names for them. So if I scroll down here, I'm right now in A mode, which is for advanced efficiency. Would that be apparent to me if I just hopped in this car and didn't know anything else about it? I wouldn't really know what A was. I'd rather it maybe just be eco. N is for natural. I've kind of just been calling it normal mode. That's the mode you're probably going to use most of the time. Dynamic, they say, is for sports driving. We've shown you what that's like on the road. And then to get into the race mode, all you have to do is twist it. You can probably hear it definitely makes the car louder only in race mode on this model that we're driving. But if you buy it, likely by the time you buy, you're watching this video, the Alfa Romeo's Quadrifoglio models that you buy will have louder exhaust on dynamic as well. And then there's this little suspension button when you're in the D or race modes to shift between a softer and a normal suspension profile. And then to get back to the menu, we just push menu and we're back here. We do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on these models now. They didn't used to have them, but they're starting to include them. I think it's like a $100 package or something like that. Definitely worth it. And then you have a volume and knob over here. You've got this digital shifter are pretty similar to BMWs. You push it for reverse. Very small backup camera. I wish it would have taken up the whole screen because the screen's not very big to begin with, but you do have your parking sensors showing up here and then just push that for reverse. Alpha has cleverly done their storage space. It's a very small amount of climate controls here. I like how they're physical controls though. You don't have to go on the screen to control any of that. Two cup holders here and as you can see I've left it open so that you could see I have my phone here in the middle plugged in for Android Auto capability but you know, they have this little segment in the middle so you don't have to waste a cup holder for your phone. And if you aren't using that, you do have a little cover here that'll cover all that up. As you can see, all of this is carbon fiber on this Quadrifolio model. Some people might like that. I think it looks pretty sporty, especially with the black with leather trim. But as you can see by, you know, using some of the buttons, they're not absolutely the nicest buttons in the world. I actually think Hyundai, Kia, and the Genesis brand has them beat. But that is not why you're buying this car for the lovely, incredible interior that blows you away. If that's what you're looking for, you might be better off with, like, say, a Volvo or a Mercedes-Benz product. This is just very nice on the interior. It feels a step above a mainstream brand, but maybe not quite as nice as the nicest in the luxury market. So... Really, this is about the driving experience. That's why you're going to want an Alfa Romeo over one of the other European brands. Now, let's go check out the back seat where not too much going on, but I think I should show you it anyway because this is an SUV and you might want to actually put people in it. All right, that's on. So back here, not a whole lot to talk about, not a whole lot of cool features to play with, but it is something uh, worth discussing. It is a nice roomy back seat. You could fit two people very comfortably back here. You could probably fit a third as well without getting too uncomfortable. You've got your center armrest that looks really scuffed up here. I don't know, whoever borrowed this before me really must have done their damage on this center console here. You do have a little bit of storage space. You've got two USB ports, so your kids back here will be able to charge up their devices, and you do have air vents back here. I think that would be a crying shame if a luxury brand tried to sell you a car that didn't 
at least have air vents back here. So yeah, the interior cabin's not too bad. I do have this sunroof closed off back here. You can sort of stop it here so the kids don't have to have all of the sun getting in, but you can up front. I think the interior is a nice place to sit, but I will mention two things to you before we go ahead and check out that trunk. And that is that my experience with the Alfa Romeo interior has not been problem free. I'm sure you've heard this from other reviews you've seen of Alfa Romeo products that the reviewers seem to have some issue with the car. And I've had a few, I'll name them now. So that nav system that we saw up front, the first day I got it, the radio and the Bluetooth stopped working. So it would not give me the option to pair my phone when I first got the car and the radio stopped playing. So it was just static. I think it like thought I was on a phone call or something like that from Apple CarPlay and it got completely stuck and flummoxed. So that was a bit of an issue. But I will say I have had an issue like that in my personal car, which is a Ford Fiesta. Nothing to do with Alfa Romeo, obviously. And I've never had that issue again since the one day that I had it. So I will say that. The bolstering, these are very bolstered seats up front, squeaks on the center tunnel as I'm trying to plug in the seatbelt and it's moving, you know, doing the entry and exit where it'll move the seat back when you get in the car. When I'm leaning into it with the bolster, you hear kind of a squeak of, that's leather on leather. Not a huge deal either. And then one time when I was trying to open up the hood to take pictures of it, it wouldn't really open. I mean, it opened, but like it didn't pop enough. So those are just three minor issues that I've had with this car. But again, I've only had it for a couple of days. So that is maybe a little worrying, might be one of the reasons why we would lease this car instead of buying it. So now let's check out the trunk, which is pretty handy as well, just like the back seat. Off. Even though this is an incredibly sporty vehicle, you're still going to care about practicality if you're buying this over a Julia. So let's go ahead and open up the rear tailgate, which is going to open up to 18 and a half cubic feet of storage, which is Okay, you can fit a lot of stuff in it. There are bigger SUVs in the segment. Stelvio is sort of a compact SUV, so think BMW X3, think Audi Q5. That's about the same size that we are dealing with here. You've got this little cargo shade here that pulls just like a normal one. And then you have this weird secondary piece that is kind of always there. I think you can remove it. I haven't really bothered to do so while I've been driving it. And folding the seats down is pretty easy, although I wish it was a little easier. I wish the seats kind of fell down more automatically but basically you've got these two tabs you just simply pull those and those will unlock each of the seats but then you have to uh, you have to lean them forward and let them fall and if you can see in there right now the seats didn't quite fall flat because the two front passenger seat the passenger seat and the driver's seat are back too far so they didn't want to fold flat but when they do they fold pretty flat and they also have little releases that you can activate from the second row as well. So if you're not back here and you're actually in the second row, you can lower the seats that way as well. And of course you have a power tailgate. So it is quite practical as a family hauler, but the real reason you buy a Stelvio, as I mentioned, is because of the way it drives. So let's price out our Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio because the Quadrifoglio model does add quite a bit to the price of a normal Stelvio. Okay, so pricing the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio is not super difficult, although it isn't going to be easy on your wallet. Base price of this 505 horsepower beast is $79,795. For that, you're going to get the 2.9 liter 505 horsepower twin turbo V6 engine mated to an eight speed automatic transmission, sending power to all four wheels. Now, Quadrifoglio does get you a whole lot of stuff. You get four wheel Brembo high performance brakes. Uh, you get push button start, remote keyless entry, start stop, active suspension, power folding mirrors, rain sensitive wipers, the quad mode exhaust system, the power lift gate. You get a speedometer that goes up to 200 miles an hour for some reason, blind spot monitoring. Now you do have to add some stuff to that. So we have this optional red competition tri coat paint that's $2,200. There are other colors that look really good for less. I'd maybe go for Misano Blue myself. You've got this convenience package. It's only 200 bucks. It's going to get you the rails in the cargo area uh, as well as a 115 volt auxiliary 
auxiliary power outlet and a cargo net, you know, that's cheap for 200 bucks. The driver assistance package I'd also probably get for 1500 gets you adaptive cruise control with stop and go, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, which is kind of annoying. I turn that off most of the time. Automatic high beam headlamp control and an infrared windshield. Sure, why not? Uh, for $100, you can add Apple CarPlay, and for an additional $100, you can add Android Auto. Sure, why not? I'd add that as well. And then for $400, you can get a carbon fiber steering wheel. I'd go ahead and skip that. I only like having one material on my steering wheel. And with a $1,595 destination charge, the as-tested price is $85,890, which is a lot, but pretty fair when you think about other high-performance SUVs in this space. All right, so it's time to wrap up with the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. And for once, I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss to decide what rating I should give this car because it's so different depending on what type of person you are. If you're a true driving enthusiast and kids came and you need something practical to haul around the family, but gasoline runs through your blood and you simply need the best driving vehicle available as an SUV, it's got to be this. This is simply the most exquisite SUV I've ever driven. On a back road, you can't even tell it's an SUV. It might as well be a hot hatch or a wagon. That's how good this thing is. But I don't think that most of the people who buy an SUV actually care. And when you just look at this as an SUV, the cargo hauling capabilities are okay, maybe mediocre, maybe a little above average at best. It can fit stuff. Comfort-wise, it's atrocious. It rides really stiff. Uh, you're going to be going over bumps, breaking your back. The technology on the inside is just okay. Alpha designed this entire infotainment system that broke twice in the time that I had it. That's not good. It's probably going to break during the time you own it as well. So with that in mind, I'm only going to give the Alfa Romeo a score of worth a look. However, if you are the person who puts driving in th uh, pleasure above all else, then this might actually be a must buy because I think Alfa Romeo has designed just one of the most exquisite driving SUVs I've ever experienced. So I'm really at a loss. You take my rating for what it's worth. You know who you are. You know how much driving actually means to your life. So assign this your own ranking accordingly based on what I've just told you. And if you want more details on the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, you know where to check out. Go on carbuzz.com. The link is in the description below. And if you've liked this review and you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe to the Carbuzz YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to be alerted of all of our latest videos. And if you like this video, I hope you check out our next one. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.